Good morning. Welcome to Back Chat. I'm Hugh Jewison. Your co-host this Friday is Danny Gittings. Danny, good morning to you. Good morning. And we're talking today about reclamation and rock caverns as the government launches the second stage of consultation on plans for reclamation of land outside Victoria Harbour. Five sites identified as possible and the idea of large artificial islands also floated. What do you think of those ideas? If we have reclamation, where is best and what should be on it? And do we need spare land, a land reserve? Call us on 233-88266 with your answers or email backchat at rthk.hk or you can go to our Facebook page and comment there. That's backchat on rthk radio 3. That's our Facebook page. We want to hear from you. Today's World War Today. After 9.15, we're going to be talking about water quality. But first, to reclamation. We have with us Edwin Tong, who's uh, head of the Civil Engineering Office, Civil Engineering and Development Department. Samantha Lee, Senior Conservation Officer Marine at WWF Hong Kong. And Paul Zimmerman, a District Councillor and a convener of Designing Hong Kong. Good morning to Good morning. all of you. Uh, Mr. Tong, let's start with you. Good morning. Thank you very much indeed for, for, for joining Good morning, us again. Good morning, Danny and Samantha. Um, start from the basics and the, the, the need for reclamation with the need for this emphasis on, on reclamation. Um, uh, you're going ahead with the second stage, uh, but in the first stage you did a consultation on the idea of reclamation, and um, the findings from when you asked the public about this were, well, let's see, you're, the, the report says that strong opposition was expressed, uh, that there was no consensus on increasing land supply through reclamation outside Victoria Harbour. Um, given that... Uh, why are you going ahead, or why did you bother to have a public consultation in the first place if people, by and large, said no? Yes, uh, let's look at um, the results of the stage one public engagement, which took place uh, from November 2011 to uh, March uh, 2012. The results we got from the public, uh, we have three main um, themes that we got from the public. First of all is the majority of them, uh, more than 80%, uh, said that we do need more land in Hong Kong. Uh, about 70% said that they support uh, adequate land reserve in Hong Kong. And most importantly, they, more than half of the, um, um, the public uh, surveyed have expressed the view that multi-pronged approach should be continued. Multi-pronged approach uh, meaning that uh, we can uh, continue with um, the, the six-pronged approach we said, rezoning land redevelopment, land resumption, reclamation, rock cavern development, and the use of exquisite sites. You are right. Um, just for the reclamation, the views are quite varied. Uh, from the questionnaires, we have more support on reclamation. But from telephone posts, we have uh, less support on reclamation, more opposition in that area. But uh, we do see um, uh, a trend that uh, a lot of these uh, opposing views are uh, anchored on particular sites. Because in the middle of the stage one public engagement, we have illustrated, uh, for illustrative purpose, we've introduced 25 sites for discussion. Many of these oppositions were anchored on particular sites. So one because thing... The telephone poll, but hang on, the telephone poll was Hong Kong wide, wasn't it? You weren't asking people, you weren't phoning up people in the areas that would be affected. You were, presumably, you were phoning everybody in Hong Kong. You were phoning That's right. section of people a in Hong sample, Kong. Yeah. And that, 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 cross sec sorry, that cross section of people in Hong Kong was the one that was decisively, by quite a large margin, uh, more than well, 13 percent, uh, against reclamation. Yes. Well, that doesn't seem to suggest that it's just people worried about reclamation going on. But similarly, uh, in their questionnaires were also um, uh, Hong Kong wide. Uh, they can uh, fill in questionnaires from the website. So uh, we do have different views from these two areas. But one thing we did see was that the selection of sites is very important because uh, out from these uh, views, we do see two particular points. One is the effect on the community is very important. Uh, many of them say that we don't need reclamation in a particular site because it's quite near to our home. The other thing is environmental effect. Uh, environmental protection is the major uh, uh, thing that they say we need to look into when selecting sites. And coming out from that, uh, before we come to this stage of uh, stage two public engagement, we selected five sites based on these themes. That means we try to avoid environmental sensitive areas, such as shorelines. Uh, out of these 25 sites, uh, the five sites we have selected uh, doesn't have very high ecological value shorelines. 
We are not talking about um, the ecology outside shoreline, but at first we have to select, we have to avoid shorelines which are ecologically sensitive. The other thing is we try to avoid uh, uh, communities which are very close by because of the views we got from stage one. But all in all, we are still trying to have the six-prong approach going on. That means reclamation is only one part of the uh, jigsaw puzzle. Well, let, let's bring in Samantha Lee, the Senior Con Conservation Officer from uh, Marine at uh, WWF Hong Kong, because you, you've expressed quite strong views um, about the government uh, pushing ahead um, with uh, reclamations as part of uh, this, this, what they call six bridge, uh, despite um, the feedback that we've seen in round one. Hey, yeah, morning, everyone. Um, I think uh, uh, when the government they uh, announced the results of the stage one consultation, they uh, kind of let me start one thing. It's because we also looked through the report, and then um, when we looked at both telephone, uh, the poll report, as well as the online questionnaire, uh, among those six options, we found that reclamation they have uh, they had the highest proportion of the people they do not support that option. It was the le it was the least popular option. Mm. Yes. Yeah, uh, how about Mr. Tong's uh, point that on the the feedback forms, uh, and the, the questionnaire, it, it was different though, it wasn't so unpopular there, so they did have one form of um, public opinion which wasn't necessarily against, so strongly against reclamation. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, and then also from that uh, qualitative report, we also look at, for example, some people they can uh, vote for, um, agree or uh, support or against certain sites, and then we can found we could find that some site, for example, like um, Chengguano or Wu Sha, they had really high amount of people they uh, opposed because of the view or the other criteria. But for the other site, um, for example, uh, the location chosen by the government, which is like Shuho Wan and the Longgu Town, because there are not too many residents living there, that's, okay. that's why they could not really voice out their voice, because they, maybe animal they cannot voice out. <laughs> that's why um, I, I, I'm just afraid maybe the government, uh, they also uh, choose their location because of this kind of number of people opposed in certain sites. But I, I just want to speak up for the marine life and marine uh, environment here. Yeah. But when they look, when they when they did survey everybody in Hong Kong, like in the telephone surveys, or you know through the questionnaires, they're they're, they're territory wide. People are still thinking of the of the the whole territory, aren't they? And that includes the natural environment. Well, uh, I have to explain one thing. Um, in the stage one public engagement, there are two types of surveys. One is quantitative, that includes the questionnaires and the telephone polls. The other is our written submissions and uh, signature campaigns and so on and so forth. The total of, uh, uh, of views received are more than 40,000. And a, a vast majority of them are signature campaigns against certain sites. So um, the, the qualitative survey on questionnaire, our, our telephone is part of it, but we received 32 signature campaigns uh, against certain sites. That's why we think that selection of sites uh, is very important. And uh, that's why we selected these sites, which we do think that they are less ecologically sensitive. They are mainly uh, man-made shorelines. Uh, not we have avoided uh, natural shorelines and, and areas. We have mangroves and things like that. The rea reality is when you talk about a six-pronged approach, I mean, <laughs> the paper you, you published is only about reclamation and rock caverns, and rock caverns, are the, I mean, the redevelopments like that are, are a sort of tiny amount of land is being freed up by them by comparison. It, it's re reclamation you must be talking about, what, 90% of the total or so? Yeah, that's right. But uh, one thing we also want to um, uh, share with the public is the concept of land reserve. Uh, as in the stage two public engagement, which we just kicked off yesterday, we want to share with the public the beauty of the land reserve. In Hong Kong, for future development, for the next generation, we do need adequate and stable supply of land. And reclamation is the most suitable um, mode of land development to provide land reserve. Because firstly, it does not affect existing land uses. You just look at um, the development plans in the uh, New Territories East and the Hong Shui Kyu, there are a lot of uh, discussion on, on the land issues. Secondly, uh, reclamation by its nature can form relatively large pieces of land for better planning. And thirdly, land reserve can uh, uh, address uh, sudden needs, sudden uh, economic chances that uh, present to Hong Kong. And that's why we do need uh, land reserve. Well, and additional beauty of reclamation is this is creation of new land and it can provide land for decanting sites 
for rehousing residents in other modes, like resumption, like development of new territories. We do need some new land to, for decanting of facilities, residents, and even economic activities. Uh, Reclamation can, can, can complement that part. Uh, let's bring in uh, Paul Zimmerman, uh, District Council in Southern District and Convener of Designing Hong Kong. Good morning, Paul. Good morning. Are you, are you, I was looking at an article from last year. You, you've, used, you've expressed uh, skepticism in the past about whether Hong Kong does need such a large land bank. Do you want, do you want to respond? Well, I, 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 I'm, we are opposing to the idea of a land reserve. Um, yeah. And I think uh, you know, Edmund Tong's argument that we get large pieces of land that we allow better planning. Let's all look at what is the latest reclamation that Hong Kong has achieved and where we, have, uh, where we can then see whether we have better planning. And that's the uh, Kowloon West reclamation along the uh, Tim Sha Choi, uh, Taco Choi waterfront that was uh, on one side. We have the highway to the, to the new airport. If you go to that piece of land, does anybody feel better planning there? I mean, they try to walk from uh, Lai Chi Kok all the way down to Kowloon. Hang on, hang on. There's, there's two, two separate things here. Mm. Whether that was planned well and whether we actually need a land reserve. Now, are you saying we don't need a land so, reserve at all? So, so, so when, when we do uh, the, the idea that we need a land reserve with an undesignated use, which is what is being suggested here, I think that we have to caution against dramatically well, because we see that if we have these land reserves without a designated use, we're not necessarily ending up with a really good plan. Sure, good that's plan. entirely fair. I mean, they have, they have suggested uses for all, all these, um, these six projects. They talk about some for residential. They talk about well, this Sunny Bay for a tourism district and so on. They, they, they are suggesting uses when they designate them. So, so if you now look at the, the current and the latest list of, um, of, of reclamations, they're, they're, the, most of them have a track have in history there is uh, so th if we're going to need a, a third runway if we're going to have a third runway at the airport we need we're going to need uh, land for logistics centers um, this this area was uh, has been identified as a potential area for new logistics centers uh, the question is is that a good area for logistics centers and if it is then how are we going to do it the um, I must say that we haven't gone ahead with this one because so far it's been found that the logistics industry was not willing to pay for the reclamation and therefore this project hasn't gone ahead uh, Sunny Bay is a bit and we have an idea of putting land there but there is no specific land use or there is no clear definition why we want it there um, other than that there is a station well Sunny um, Bay they've been talking about ever since they've been, I was in the original Chet Black Hawk Master Plan wasn't for, it? for a long time there's a lot of uh, kind of suggestions that it could be uh, because there's a station there but we have never seen any particular good plans for the land use Malu Yushu is to me is, is a, a good example where there is um, you know we've got man-made shorelines we've got existing rail lines We've got an existing uh, uh, road infrastructure that, where there is an enormous amount of capacity, spare capacity for transport. Uh, so that's probably a very, a very good site to. So uh, you're not opposed to them all, then, are you? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm not opposed to them all. If there's, so even in Mali Yushu, we're looking at Sha Tin and we're looking at developing a residential neighbourhood there and expanding the neighbourhood, especially when we remove the uh, the sewage treatment plant there. We, we have a good opportunity there. But again, it must be defined from a clear urban plan and there's got to be a good strategy behind it not just because people are not complaining in the area which is it's some of the negative you don't, you don't oppose on principle you take a site by site approach and you find some sites where there might actually be a case well I'd rather look at Hong Kong overall and say what are the demands and needs for land that we're going to need what are the best locations for putting that land and, and, and so on we, we have always said about the reclamation that got to be a matter of last resort you first got to do uh, the the rezoning we have a lot of land in the new territories which is very inefficiently used and it's very difficult for the government to get their head around on resolving the issues there and so if you just allow government to proceed with reclamation easily um, then they avoid the hard work of the new territory so from that perspective we've always said new, 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 so you, you want to make it more difficult for them to reclaim so that they'll, they'll try other alternatives more seriously and resolve they... the new territories where we have massive amount of inefficiently used land and where we have bad land management so the government has to not avoid in, in the hard work that is necessary yet. well Samantha Lee do you recognize the need for, for more land uh, in Hong Kong and what are your views on, on the need for a, uh, a land bank or some land reserve uh, for, for this bit, I'm quite conservative because uh, at the moment, I think Hong Kong, we do not have a really good population policy. And then, for example, um, how, many, how many people we would like to have in Hong Kong and then how much more land we would like to need for that? Because um, when, we look at, uh, when we look back to the uh, questionnaire conducted by the government, uh, uh, about 2,600 people, they said that the government should fully utilize the existing inefficiently used land rather than reclamation. So, um, for, 
but for the land reserve, I'm a bit skeptical. And then uh, I think it's most likely we, we can have land reserve. But um, as uh, echoing uh, what Paul Zimmerman said, saying it, uh, re- reclamation should be the last resort because when we uh, we claim the land, uh, it is irreversible. We cannot take it away. And the thing is. Um, the thing is, uh, it may also really affect a lot of um, uh, and, uh, the marine life, uh, which are really vulnerable, particularly the Chinese white dolphin, because this is really alarming that um, now they have uh, less than 100 individuals in Hong Kong already. So for having land reserve, um, this is uh, need to be really careful to plan. Uh, in particular, you need to think of uh, what is the purpose, because when you, rec- when you uh, reclaim a land um, in the future, maybe you want to develop certain thing, and then you still ought to need to um, think about the hardware, for example, are you going to build any more bridge or um, lay under uh, underwater cable or anything also uh, related to occupy some certain area of the marine? This, you all need to think thoroughly and carefully. Um, Edwin Toller, let's address that issue of the environmental concerns. I, I saw extracts on the press conference yesterday where they're saying that um, you have new reclamation, t- something called simulated rec- reclamation, which I must admit I didn't understand. Mm. That, but but you, you do now have ways of actually testing and lessening the impact on the environment that you didn't have in the past. Is that correct? Well, um, let me make clear here. Uh, when we look at the selection of the shorelines, we do realize that and some of the sites there will be Chinese white dog and CWDs. But um, from the current record, we do not uh, know whether they are very active in the shallow water area. In reclamation, we first look at the shallow water area. That's why in the next stage, we do need to get the help from the experts to look at the shallow water area, whether there are a lot of dolphin activities. We do see that, um, say, uh, 200 meters or 300 meters away from the shoreline, there are some activities there. That's why uh, in in the next stage, we need to have uh, uh, experts to work with us and, uh, and also the green groups to work with us to look at the uh, activities of the dolphins in the shallow waters. And in doing so, we are trying to be innovative and trying to think of a virtual reclamation concept. That is, um, we try to think of some uh, possible means to try to uh, have a a, a modeled reclamation in that area to see how the dolphins would react to it. And in that case, we do can find some real information on whether the uh, dolphins are active in uh, the areas we want to reclaim. If they are, we can refine the boundary of the reclamation. Are uh, you reassured by that, Ms. Lee? Uh, this part we are also uh, we have been discussing with the other uh, marine experts yesterday, and then we are uh, also doubtful because, um, as more of us know, that uh, the the dolphins they don't swim to very sh- uh, shallow water, which is really close to the shoreline, because um, there is always buffer zone. Because near the uh, let, at the shoreline, you always have a lot of uh, human disturbance or traffic. That's why uh, there's always a certain uh, 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 distance of the buffer zone. Okay, um, you may not be able to find a lot of dolphins uh, be active there, but after you do the reclamation, you will have a new uh, saw line, which they will also, uh, the dolphin will also have some buffer zone, uh, uh, which is away from the shoreline. So you are kind of like pushing uh, the dolphins further away into the sea. And then this is really dangerous because you also know that, uh, for example, in Longku Town, um, there is the fairway which you always have uh, like high speed vessel traveling uh, between Hong Kong, China, Macau. So you, if uh, you push it further into the sea, which means that they may need to have a higher usage of those really dangerous area, and then you will increase the collision rate or the disturbance by the marine traffic, uh, the marine vessel, which is um, we we have really high concern about that. Do you disagree with the government about the details? But do you, uh, 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 Smithley, do you at least welcome the fact that gov- government's willing to work with environmental groups? Do, do you think they're sincere actually? That they, they, they do listen to opinions, even if you end up having disagreements. Um, for this day, I really ho- hope that the government will uh, listen to us more and just talk more. And um, I think we, uh, for example, when they design on certain uh, studies, or for example, that uh, simulation reclamation, please uh, do uh, talk, uh, talk about this with us and so we can keep having input because we understand that uh, maybe in the future, if the government really want to do a reclamation in Hong Kong, we really want to want to give you some more input that how to minimize the impact in the, in the lowest level. And there's also this idea that uh, you can uh, adjust the, the design of the reclamation, the, the seawalls that you design, whether they're straight seawalls or the seawalls that are designed to stimulate uh, um, marine life and therefore the improve the ecology in the area. And uh, there are different uh, designs. How about the question I put to Simon Philly? Mm-hmm. Do you think the government's sincere working with green groups? Well, I think it's better I, than it used to be. I, mean, well, I, I I, I, I absolutely believe that that's the case, and the government is coming around to but, but whether they 
completely agree with of us course, on, yes, on, on, the, on the land supply agree, strategy. That is a different issue. But I think that the government is definitely, uh, you know, going more communicative. And then there, is, uh, there are more opportunities to give input. Um, and we hope that the government is going to be more active in soliciting input and experimenting ideas. Uh, Dave Wynn uh, told me you're getting some supportive words there. Um, I wanted to ask you about something else that came up in the press conference yesterday. I mean, I think you, you, uh, there's quite a lot of concern that only two of these reclamation sites can actually provide housing, and that's what's on people's minds at the moment. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, um, yeah, I, I'm sure if you had a public opinion poll, would you support reclamation to solve Hong Kong's housing shortage, you'd probably get a higher vote, vote in favour, but um, these six sites don't really help that much. Well, um, apart from these six sites, uh, first look at, look at the, the five sites, okay? The five sites, although only two at the moment, seems to be uh, favorable for housing. The other sites can be used and for other activities which are required by Hong Kong. And by putting these sites to these uh, facilities, other areas in the urban areas can be freed up. Uh, uh, I, yeah, I heard that argument yesterday, but I don't yeah. understand it. I mean, how, you said Sunny Bay is going to be a tourist area. What, what, what area are you going to free up for residential development? That we're, were you, you're suggesting you would have put the tourist facility in Sim Sao Chai otherwise or something? No. Uh, for instance, for Siho Wan, the logistic park and things like that. If we do need a logistic park, then we need to find some place for it anyway. So, uh, the, 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 we look at the, the, the whole Hong Kong as a whole. Uh, may I also come back to a Paul's point about uh, reclamation being the last resort of the six prong? We do see it differently because the six prong will complement each other. Uh, for, for population for, from Census Department, in the next 30 years, we are seeing a 1.37 million increase in population. Although what, um, the skeptics would say that, oh, the, the, the figures are always wrong. But that is the main point. Uh, it's difficult to forecast population. But reclamation uh, or a land reserve can actually address this problem. It, it addresses the problem because if there's a fluctuation in the development scale and so on, we do have new land. Uh, for the other modes, these are using existing land from one use to the other. Reclamation actually gives us new land to address the problem of fluctuation in the economy and things like that. Well, I, I don't, don't disagree that we need a pipeline, that you need a strategic plan that looks far ahead into the future, what the population is, is going to be, what the, uh, the, you know, what means, what, what does it mean to have a quality of life in Hong Kong with larger living spaces and what we need to, uh, to, to supply land and, and development for our economic development. Of course we need that, and we need to make sure that we identify where that is going to come from, that, that land or these development rights, because a lot of it is going to be existing land that could be developed uh, that is currently used for factories and we could use it for other purposes it's currently used for open storage in the new territories and we can use it for other purposes so how you supply against the demand that you see on the long term we, we have made the point that if you got to supply for it you got to make sure you, you deal with the existing issues of inefficient land users and not go for your cheapest and easiest which is to you know get a bunch of engineers build a seawall and, and make and make new land where there's that's owned by nobody and therefore you can easily go ahead and now you make it trying to make it even more easier for you by avoiding all the areas where people have objections and where the environmentalists have objections so well, you go to areas that, you that go a idea, idea right to avoid sneaking the sneaking out to areas where nobody can nobody makes comments on it so that seems to be the strategy where we say you should come up with a strategic plan for Hong Kong as a whole. True. We are avoiding the uh, eco shoreline or the we are avoiding the, uh, the, the sensitive shorelines and, and things like that. One point I think I, I wish also to make is reclamation is a very long process. If you don't start to, to plan about it now and uh, we, we, we uh, wait until all the five options hit the wall then we're stuck. I mean uh, it has to go together with the other five options. What, what, what sort of timetable? If, if we started reclamation and, um, say next year on these um, on these sites, well, what, what sort of timetable would, would we be looking at? Actually, uh, we are not looking at reclaiming the first piece of land tomorrow or next year. The next stage is after the pub uh, public engagement stage two, we are going to try to get funds for detailed uh, studies for all these five sites. And also the artificial islands we have, uh, uh, we have uh, tried to propose in the central waters. So the next stage is to get money for detailed uh, study, including environmental impact assessment and so on and so forth. But if everything went according to plan, what would be the earliest that one of these sites could be required? How long does it take? 10 years? 15 years? Normally it takes about 10 years to have the first piece of land, but we are looking at trying to streamline the procedures. This is one thing we are also looking at in the next stage. And we are looking at maybe if everything goes smoothly, if we have the support, maybe 2019 or 2020 to have the first piece of land.
Okay, well, you mentioned the floating islands, but we'll get to that uh, later in, uh, in the program after the news at nine o'clock. It's another uh, interesting and controversial uh, idea. Also, the rock islands as well, perhaps we could touch on. Uh, you listen to Backchat uh, this morning. Do uh, join in. You can email backchat at rthk.hk or call us on 233-88266. Okay, an email a message from Jason uh, who says, uh, Cancel Juhai Bridge. Uh, we don't have the capacity in the construction industry for reclamation. We don't have the capacity for existing commitments. We need to cancel the Juhai Bridge. It has its own problems, but also pushes up building costs for the rest of the economy. For example, schools, the school fees go up, residences, flat prices are up, uh, hospitals, fees, and so on, West Cowden Cultural Districts, and so on. We need to rezone old industrial and uh, different sites, uh, says Jason. That's an issue we could return to as well. Uh, Jason adds, P.S. Uh, Disneyland would be a great spot for a new town. There is that huge area, as I keep mentioning, that huge area next to Disney as well, which is completely unused at the moment. Um, anyway, uh, we'll get back to um, the topic in about three minutes' time after the news. Uh, before that, here's the latest weather information from the observatory. Cloudy today with some mists this morning and at night. A couple of light rain patches at first. Sunny intervals during the day. The maximum temperature about 24 degrees. Moderate to fresh easterly winds becoming moderate south later. The outlook is for sunny periods tomorrow and there will be showers on Sunday. The readings at the moment at the observatory, 19 Celsius, humidity at 91%. Welcome back. This is Bank Chat on a Friday morning. We're talking about the uh, government's second stage of proposals on reclamation outside the harbour. We have with us Paul Zimmerman, uh, district councillor and uh, our convener of Designing Hong Kong, Samantha Lee, senior conservation officer marine at WWF Hong Kong, and Edwin Tong, who's the head of the Civil Engineering Office and Engineering at Development Department, to introduce this second stage of consultation. Your co-host today is Danny Gittings. My name is Hugh Chiverton. Okay, some comment from listeners. Bank Chat at rthk. HK is our email address. Um, and they're back on the topic of uh, population as well, which is kind of the starting point for, uh, for all this. Uh, Jason says, it's true the Hong Kong government can't predict population, but the US government has predicted Hong Kong population and it's declining, uh, says Jason. Uh, Jason, if, you, if you've got time, you could point us towards that. I haven't seen that. That's an interesting uh, claim. Um, uh, housing Estate Brett says, um, where do they all come from? A million something more people for Hong Kong, did I hear? That's the root problem, and I mean problem, the full meaning of the P word here. I'm referring to something. Um, yesterday, Housing Estate Brett also says, uh, we have something like, uh, he says, 250,000 uh, unoccupied properties in the territory. Every time I go out, the minibus I ride passes public rental housing estates with empty units. Also seen are empty patches of land left fallow for years. Uh, I also don't see that many homeless people out there. What do we need more reclamation for, um, says Housing Estate Brett. Um, um, Samantha Lee, um, do, you, do you accept the need for more uh, land for housing, um, given the population estimates, which are our best guess? Uh, at the moment, uh, I would accept it for uh, the more land for the housing because we also, well, in recently a lot of news uh, saying that uh, 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 it's not enough flat for us to buy and then certainly I think in Hong Kong uh, we need uh, more land for housing. But of course, um, when we look for new land and again we, we, we point to that point, it's, um, we also need to look at to, to, uh, to look at the redevelopment zone or some areas that not really um, effectively used. Okay. Uh, Craig in an email says, can we now confirm the previous plan to reclaim against a natural shoreline in Tung Chung Bay is now off the government's crazy list and with it the MTR extension to Tung Chung West. Uh, also, Sunny Bay would be a great place to live with noise from the aircraft, no worse than Park Island, uh, says Craig. Um, what about the development in, in Tung Chung? That was something that was touched on by the... Uh, in the policy address, wasn't it? There was a uh, discussion of that. Is this included in the reclamation, or is that... Anybody know? Well, um, here, uh, yeah. the Tong Chong uh, uh, reclamation uh, project is, is ongoing. It's, it's something else because it is already in the, in the uh, consultation stage uh, about the project itself. Uh, the best, uh, from the best of my knowledge, it did avoid any uh, sensitive shoreline in that area. 
Uh, for Tongchong, um, I, uh, they are going to reclaim two pieces of land. Uh, one is Tongchong East, which is 110 hectares, and in the west of the Tongchong is 175 hectares. And uh, is it, uh, okay, uh, so uh, we. That's not included in this. That's not, in this not, not included system. because um, that was planted before, and then uh, for this Tongchong development project is now um, under the uh, environmental impact assessment process. So uh, the government they uh, also hire some consultants to conduct some uh, research to see uh, to conduct some environmental assessment. So this is a, a, um, a study stage at the moment. Okay, Craig, I hope that clears it up. That's, a, that's something else and, and that's going ahead. Um, let's talk about the um, artificial islands in the central waters, which we haven't really touched on so far. I mean, this is further down the road. I'm looking at the, 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 uh, the government publication. They, they've, they illustrated it with a picture of Sento... I, they don't label it. It must be Sentosa Island in um, Singapore, suggesting that Hong Kong should have its own equivalent of Sentosa. And we're talking about huge area here. I mean, it's, it's, well, it's talking about equivalent of, what, 50, 60 West Kowloon districts. Um, um, Edwin Tong, you, you realise that for artificial, this huge artificial island, there are much broader implications, aren't there? That, that must be a very long-term project. Yeah, I must make a clarification here. So the area that's shown in the, the, the project uh, digest is only the study area. We are talking about oh, we are going to study this area. you're not it'll be yeah. that big. Because what you're talking about, would, well, basically all the area between Lama and Chung Chao would disappear as, on, on what you put on the, on the project. This is only the study area where we can put um, uh, artificial islands. The reason why we choose the central waters, we have looked at three waters. The eastern waters, we have a large area there, but um, those areas have a lot of uh, uh, ecology, e ecological sensitive shorelines, and they are much deeper than the central waters. They are more than uh, 20 meters deep, so it's not good for reclamation. And also, if we put artificial islands there, we cannot uh, effectively connect to the urban area because it's a long way from the urban area, from, from the eastern waters. Um, actually, eastern waters, we preserve this as a backyard of Hong Kong, a back garden of Hong Kong, and so on and so forth. For the western waters, that is the, between the northern land and, uh, 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 and the, the, the airport and that area, there is already a lot of um, projects going on. And, and, and this uh, China, China, Chinese white dolphin is, is over there. So we don't think that is a good area for large piece of reclamation uh, in, the central, uh, in the central of the waters. But for central waters, uh, we do see that there is the opportunity to put artificial islands there and link it up with the central uh, urban district which is quite close to uh, Lantau, the uh, Chiang Mai Bridge, uh, Kowloon area, and even to the western part of Hong Kong. Link out to the central district, you, you, you would have to basically run a road across the, across the harbour. I, mean, I remember the early plans for Chiang Kai-shek. This was, this was drawn in for a late stage, wasn't it? You'd have a road coming out from Hong Kong, western Hong Kong Island straight across the harbour, wouldn't you? There is one of the things that we have to look into, whether it's feasible and how much it costs and how we best to, to link up the, um, several islands or to create artificial islands. The best thing about artificial islands is you may be able to give a, a big piece of land to the people of Hong Kong. A uh, lot like um, uh, near shore reclamation, the best we can do in Long Kutan is only 200 or 300 hectares. But for artificial islands, if we do it properly, we may get, uh, we are talking about um, 1,400 to 2,400 hectares of land. How Paul Zimmerman have this idea to solve all our problems, right? We don't have to worry about um, the, rec <laughs> the dolphins and the reclamation in those areas. Well, in fact, those plans are really uh, old. Uh, when um, after the Second World War, uh, okay, Hong Kong was looking uh, at been uh, for a long time, it doesn't necessarily mean we can't do it, right? Well, in, in, well in, you, not that saying you can't do it, but the um, you know when we looked at moving Kai Tak, the original plan was to move it uh, in in those central waters. Um, when uh, we had plans for new container terminals, these was also exactly those areas. Suggest so this is. A very, it's an old plan it's a too. good area that's why it's been looked at so many times well they looked at it because th there is there are some areas between um, Heiling Chow and Peng Chow where the water is not very deep and north of Sunshine Island where the water is not very d deep so I mean this this very rough indication that we see in this consultation is not really fair um, if you, you should publish the nautical charts that are available from the marine department you can see where the fairways are you can see where the water depths are and you can see realistically where you could you know, create islands um, and they would be 
be uh, most likely be attached to the existing islands. And, and the biggest impact would be, uh, you know, how, how you connect them to inf- existing road infrastructure. Uh, if you build them close to Lantau, you can connect them to the Lantau Expressway and to the rail lines there. If you get them closer to Hong Kong Island, then Hang how on, do you Lantau connect them? The Expressway and the rail lines on the other side of Lantau. Then you, you have, have to, to, you have to through. punch through. You have to punch, punch through. through yeah. Yeah, the same way you already have a tunnel with, between Discovery Bay and, um, and the, the north side. So you need to punch through, but you've got to find a way to do that. And if you connect in with Hong Kong Island, you're going to get problems with reclamation around Kennedy Town, where we basically within Victoria Harbour, where reclamation is is ex- excluded as an option. So uh, the, you know, I would add the, the problem with these artificial islands again. It's just the, the you know the other ones you can somehow see that there is a plan. You know, Mario showed that you can see a plan for building a new town. You can see, you can see a plan for for logistic centres, maybe at, La- at North Lantau, close to the airport. You can see a good argument for it. The artificial island in the middle of the water. What's the plan? You know, what what are we exactly going to need this for? You're saying you don't think it's going to happen. Oh. Well, I you're saying this island has been around for a long time and there's no no, no plan. In it. Basically, you're saying you don't think it's going to happen. You got to clearly define what you need that land for and why we're going to need it, and then decide whether you're going to you're willing to go for that expense. Um, I I can't see I can't see that going to happen for a very long time unless there is a very clear clearly stated demand. If you say, well, we're going to build an, an, a big new town, and we think that this is a great area to do it for many for these and these reasons. But I haven't seen that argument. Edwin Tong, we're talking very long term, aren't we here? I mean, yes, yes, it's very long term. And 20, 30 years? Um, yeah, 20 years, maybe. But um, this actually is one of the views given by some of the, the respondents in the stage one public engagement. They say, uh, other than thinking about, you know, here 20 hectares, there 30 hectares, why do you think of some big new artificial islands in I central waters? It's one of the views given by public. By mainland Chinese um, engineer. <laughs> Samantha Lee, what do you think of the idea? Uh, for this artificial island, I really uh, suggest the government to take a re- uh, precautionary approach yes. because it sounds great. Uh, it may provide a big, big piece of land, but first thing is uh, you need to uh, check if that big piece of land will uh, block the current. And then second is um, when you uh, develop a big piece of land, you also need to think of the supporting facilities. Like I uh, uh, talked before, is you may need to build bridge, bridges, tunnels and other things and then it may also occupy the marine habitat and then there's, uh, the third thing is um, we all know that we are really happy that uh, trawling, trawling is banned in Hong Kong waters and according to um, Edwin just said that it may take 20 to 30 years time and then uh, in, in that Okay, after 20, 30 years, we may have uh, much more uh, fishery resources, which because of the sea is uh, recovery. And then at that time, this piece of land, maybe we have some uh, fish uh, living there, uh, just uh, use the habitat there. So the government, they also need to do some projection or do some study to see, okay, maybe at that time there will be a lot of fishery resources. How are you going to deal with that? And then also this big piece of land is um, the fishermen. They, are, they, they always go fishing, doing there, and then we cannot neglect their right because they are the sea user, if you build a big piece of land, means that the, the fishermen they do not have enough, um, they will have less space to do the fishing. And this we all need to uh, take into account for consideration. Edwin Tong, this idea has been around for a long time. You, you must have some preliminary ideas. Would, would we be more likely to be talking about one big island or a succession of small islands? Would it all be for residential d- purposes or would it be mixed use? I mean, what, what sort, when you've talked about this, what sort of preliminary ideas have you had? Well, um, there are different mixtures of, of ideas there. Um, you've talked about all of them. There has been a, a suggestion of a very big island uh, south of, of, of uh, Changchao. That was actually one of the 25 sites illustrated uh, in the stage one. But there are also other I- ideas of linking different islands by bridges or, or tunnels. You mean uh, existing islands or new artificial islands here? New and, uh, and, and existing together. That, that's one idea as well. And I, I must say that if everything goes all right and, and there is big support for these, if we go ahead, possibly we, we can do it in, in less than 15 years. Um, yeah, Macau. How long did it take in Macau? Um, um, that's changed the face of Macau, hasn't it? Mm. With, the, with, with the reclamation there. Join two islands together, don't they? Um, yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Uh, okay, an email from uh, Glenn. Uh, sorry, a message on our Facebook page from Glenn. 
Uh, going back to the Lungku town, um, this is right on the on, on the west uh, on the west side. Uh, Lung, uh, Glenn says Lungku town would need a massive amount of transport infrastructure added to avoid another Chinchu Wai, a failed town. Government and other contractors for the Hong Kong Juhai Bridge have done a great job destroying the ecological value of the area, uh, says Glenn. What were you thinking of in Lungku town? Was 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 that housing, uh, or was that more kind of um, stuff we don't want anywhere else? Well, Lung Town actually is, is, is uh, also suitable for housing, at least part of it, um, mm -hmm. looking at the locations and looking at the size of the reclamation there. But there's also opportunity for, for educational um, usage and, and facilities like that. And for infrastructure, it's one of the things that we have to look into, obviously, uh, because there's only one road going to Lung Town at the moment. But the beauty of actually all the uh, three western selected sizes, we have already invested a, a lot of infrastructure in those areas when compared with other sites. So it's not too big a problem to upgrade the infrastructures and access to these areas. Now, you made a mistake on the, also not, not you personally, the government made a mistake on the Hong Kong uh, Macau Zhuhai Bridge. You didn't conduct a far enough environmental impact assessment studies, and uh, the court initially fa found against the government. I know it was overturned on appeal, but found against the government, and as a result, that project was delayed, and the government says that the costs have risen as a result, although that, that's disputed. I presume you're going to be very careful with all, all of these different times that you do conduct every possible in impact assessment. I Absolutely. Think, I think one more thing is, well, now we know that Western water is really congested. We have a uh, contaminated map pit, we have the, uh, cost, uh, the Hong Kong Jimacal Bridge, we have uh, maybe in the future, maybe we will have one way in another Tong Chong uh, new town development. I think the government now what they need to do is to, um, to, to calculate the carrying capaci capacity because we have so many things in the western waters. What is the carrying capacity? Uh, uh, what will be the impact to the uh, marine environment? Because um, in last uh, few years we have a rampant development and then we could also see that the dolphin numbers they are dropping so I think in, 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 instead to just build more things in the western waters to kind of like to do better facilitation for us but we also need to think of uh, for the capacity build, uh, capa uh, the carrying capacity has it all already re uh, reached the maximum will it cause further stress and also threats to the marine life there I think the government also need to study about this Samantha you can rest assured because we are going to uh, look after this by doing some cumulative um, impact assessment in this area on all these ecology concerns. And, and it's important also to look at the area as a whole. Uh, you know, we've been adding uh, piecemeal. Every time there's a plan coming out, there's a little bit of reclamation here, a little bit of reclamation there, and on a bridge, and on a tunnel. Um, and, and we added, can it keep adding them up, but there's a result. We have a lot to do with a lot of parallel roads and parallel flyovers, and, and uh, we'd be taking a far more land than if we plan the area as a whole, where we take a long-term approach and then work backwards. Uh, but we seem to, because we're afraid of, of um, uh, pushback from environmental groups, and so we only show a little cart and then another little cart and another right, little cart. Push back from environmental groups. This is what you, exactly what you do, right? Well, well the, the point. Well, the, the point is that challenge of the government to come up. We, we, we say don't come back with just piecemeal little things and kind of like show little cars oh, and do one on, by if you come one. Come back with a big one. You'll say it's far too big and look at population studies. You're not going to need that number of population. The government yeah. can't win either way. You, well, you, the government they will have to come for the area of here where we're very concerned about this piecemeal approach to the impact on the environment. The government has to come up with an overall plan showing all the infrastructure combined. And not piecemeal. I echo Paul that um, in Hong Kong we need a, a, a more forward looking solution, which is to conduct marine spatial planning. This planning, uh, uh, for, uh, for the terrestrial, we have a lot of planning for different land use. For the sea, you know, it is like a mess. Uh, as echoing the uh, Paul saying that it's like a piecemeal. So the Hong Kong uh, government also need to think about conducting marine spatial planning to see which piece of uh, sea is for um, a protected uh, piece of sea is uh, have a lower ecological value, which you can consider development. And then uh, for this, uh, uh, calendar and then also uh, UK they have uh, they have been quite successful in planning how we are going to use the sea in order to reduce the conflict between conservation development and then can also achieve the uh, social environmental econom uh, economic uh, out objectives one last email from JR um, perhaps Mr. Tong if you'd like to address this uh, JR says uh, two birds with one stone why not remove some of the container terminals and reclaim that for housing and so on it would remove one of the major sources of air pollution ships and container lines whilst creating a giant bit of land 
uh, I think the container terminals is one of the major economy movers in Hong Kong at the moment. So um, this is uh, one suggestion. I think um, uh, everyone can debate about this. Yeah, the South Ching Yi reclamation that is in the plan here specifically to create more land for container terminals and shipping operations. So um, I think the government is on the uh, uh, complete opposite of, the, uh, of this plan. Okay, um, last word going to Brett, if I can get the stupid computers to work, uh, who, who, who says, <laughs> I say again, our container port will eventually go away, probably before 20 years from now. Redevelop that, says Brett, echoing that uh, uh, email, separate email from uh, JR. Well, thank you very much indeed to, to our guests this morning, to uh, Edwin Tong, uh, thanks Mr. Tong, uh, head of the thank Civil you. Engineering uh, Office, Civil Engineering and Development Department, to Samantha Lee, uh, Senior Conservation Officer Marine at WWF Hong Kong, and Paul Zimmerman, District Councillor and Convener of of designing